Hello everybody, welcome to module two, Acute GI Disorders. This is uh, part of a two week um, module. Uh, this week will be acute GI disorders and next week we're gonna talk about chronic GI disorders. So first up, we're gonna talk about gastroenteritis. Uh, everyone has probably experienced this um, at some point in their life. So essentially what this is is inflammation of the stomach and intestine. It can be acute or chronic. So acute meaning it kind of happened right away. Chronic meaning it's kind of more of a long-standing issue. Maybe it's been going on for a week, two weeks, a month. It's a chronic inflammatory process. Um, a lot of different causes, bacteria, virus, parasite, can be from an injury, poison, drugs, food aller uh, allergies, food intolerances, stress. Um, mainstays of treatment are fluids, brat diet, bananas, rice, applesauce, toast. And if you know the cause, you want to treat it. If it is bacterial, they may need antibiotics, but the large majority of cases are viral in nature. Um, usually with this, um, I treat like with um, Pepto-Bismol tablets, two tablets every four hours. You know, once you kind of get the vomiting under control, because most of these people will present with vomiting, diarrhea, um, and they can hold things down. You try to treat Pepto-Bismol tablets, two tablets every four hours, um, control the vomiting. Um, and also a lot of these people will become like lactose intolerant for a short period of time. So I always tell them to avoid dairy products for two weeks. Um, it's kind of like the short term lactose intolerance. Um, so you always want to kind of tell them that as well. Uh, appendicitis, um, also something super, super common that you're going to run into. So this is inflammation caused by obstruction and or infection. Uh, and that obstruction is usually stool, okay? It kind of will get stuck in the lumen, cause an infection, and then you have a problem. Um, it's usually treated with surgery, okay? Um, there have been studies um, where they will treat with antibiotics, okay, uh, hold off, um, and then see what happens, see if it resolves with the with IV antibiotics. However, those studies have also shown that the patients, a lot of them will still require surgery at some point down the line, okay. Um, in regards to diagnosis, CT is always still going to be your best test for diagnosis. Um, there is some utility in uh, use of ultrasound, okay, especially in children, okay, but the problem with ultrasound is you need to have a very experienced technician, okay? So somebody that does um, ultrasounds on appendixes specifically all the time. Um, and also body habitus is going to, you know, uh, play a role in that. And also whether there's gas around the appendix, sometimes that will obscure things. Uh, a lot There's a lot of different issues there um, that come into play with that. Uh, preoperatively, obviously nothing by mouth, IV fluids, pain management, bed rest. Complications of this can perforate, peritonitis, abscess, sepsis, all of that stuff. Classic presentations, you know, pain around the umbilicus and radi radiates to the right lower quadrant. Some people will have different anatomy, okay? So you might see this in different presentations. Um, I've seen people with flank pain have appendicitis. Some people will have pain on the left side, okay? Um, so it's always, you know, sometimes a little bit different, so you always want to keep it in your differential diagnosis. Uh, I once had an elderly gentleman come in. His chief complaint with, was chest pain, okay, uh, but he ended up having appendicitis. Um, that's why I always tell people uh, when you, you have a patient come in with chest or abdominal pain, you always want to do that full exam, okay? If you have a chest pain patient, you always do an abdominal exam. If you have an abdominal pain patient, you, you always want to do a chest exam um, because you never really know what's going on. Patients sometimes really can't differentiate what's going on. Pain radiates, things like that. Um, and you always want to remember... In regards to test questions, McBurney's point, SOAS sign, uh, Ro Rosing sign, if you see a question, probably really expect appendicitis. Bowel obstruction. So it's a blockage of normal flow through the intestinal tract, usually the small intestine, but you can have a bowel obstruction in the large intestine. Usually what you're going to see with this, abdominal distension, cramping, uh, minimal peristalsis, meaning things aren't moving. They're not passing gas, okay? can be a partial obstruction, could be a complete obstruction. 
um, usually it's going to be from adhesions, tumor, or hernia. People have, that have uh, had prior abdominal surgeries are at a higher risk of bowel obstructions. Uh, diagnosis for this is x-ray or CAT scan. Treatment, you want to keep these people NPO, give them IV fluids, pain management. Sometimes, depending on the severity, uh, these people are going to need surgery. Uh, and also they may need an NG tube. Cholecystitis. Um, this also can be acute or chronic. Okay. Uh, this is, you know, acute or chronic. Uh, inflammation of the gallbladder wall. So the things that you want to remember with this, you always want to remember the Fs, female, fat, 40, fertile. So those are the people that are going to be the highest risk for cholecystitis or issues with their gallbladder. However, that being said, lots of other people can have gallbladder issues. Uh, the other group you got to be concerned about, people that have had bariatric surgery or a rapid weight loss, okay? Those people are going to be at a huge risk as well. Um, most people that have gallbladder stones, okay, are for, are, uh, the stones are made from cholesterol. Uh, you want to do testing, check labs, specifically LFTs, check an ultrasound. Uh, that's going to be your best test. Treatment for this, low-fat diet, surgery. If it's infected, um, you know, a lot of times they like to get the infection under control before they do surgery. So they may be sent home on antibiotics, let it cool off a little bit before they do surgery, um, especially if they're stable. So generally, first choice is going to be Augmentin. A second choice may be uh, Ciproflagyl. Uh, it's kind of usually the surgeon kind of dictates a choice. HIDA scan will evaluate the function of the gallbladder familiarity dyskinesia. Acute pancreatitis. So again, another thing can be acute or chronic inflammation of and around the pancreas will improve with rest and time. However, you can have it be severe and it can lead to multi-system organ failure. Again, NPO, IV fluids, pain management, usually the cause is alcohol, but it can be from gallbladder disease, trauma, elevated triglycerides, and other causes. If you see this in a child, you need to be concerned for child abuse. C. diff. Fever, non-bloody diarrhea, abdominal cramping, foul-smelling stool. Um, you got to think antibiotic use. They might be a resident in a hospital, long-term care facility. Um, you know, more severe infection is associated with more severe symptoms. Obviously, isolate them. IV fluids, flagell, can lead to complications, and it can be very difficult to treat. They might need uh, some type of a fecal transplant, especially if they're resistant to medications. Diverticulitis. So a lot of this will start with diverticulosis. So the diverticulosis is outpouchings um, in the large intestine. Um, and lots of people have that. As you get older, most people have this. Um, and about 10 to 25% of those with the diverticulosis will get diverticulitis, okay? And that's when those things get infected um, or inflamed. Uh, most cases are on the left side. It's more common in women and older adults. Treatment, again, Augmentin or Cipro plus Flagyl. Gastritis, it's inflammation of the stomach lining. You're going to see people with anorexia, nausea, vomiting, epigastric pain. Um, could be acute or chronic. Um, and then there's a whole host of different types. Okay, so just know the different types of gastritis. Uh, avoid NSAIDs because that will irritate things. Uh, always talk about dietary and lifestyle management. You know, alcohol is going to irritate it, smoking, coffee, um, treatment, PPIs. Colic. Um, so colic, persistent crying, okay, under three months for over four hours a, um, a day. So the rule of three, um, they're crying over three hours per day, more than three days a week for over three weeks uh, duration. No specific cause is usually found, okay. You rule out any Red flags, you know, what's going on? Why is this child crying? Do they have a serious issue? Um, is there child abuse involved? Do, you know, do they have something wrapped around them? Uh, you know, a lot of times the parents are going to be very frustrated. Um, no one strategy is necessarily effective, but make sure they have very close follow-up. And sometimes you can use some probiotics or prebiotics. Try different things. Uh, foreign body ingestion in children. Most foreign bodies are going to pass without an issue because um, kids like to swallow stuff and put things where they don't belong. Um, coins, small toys are the most common. Um, 
usually happens between six months and three years. So if it's over five centimeters in diameter, two centimeters thick, over 10 centimeters long, may need to be taken out. The things that you gotta be concerned about, disc batteries, coins that have nickel in it, magnets, lead, sharp objects. Those are all bad things. Um, you wanna make sure it's not in the esophagus or inhaled in the lung. Okay, if the object reaches the stomach, it's usually okay, unless, like I said, it's one of the concerning objects. You want to make sure they're eating, drinking normally, and acting normally. Inesusception. Um, it is the most frequent cause of intestinal obstruction in children. This can occur in adults as well. I've actually seen several cases of inesusception in adults. Uh, the best way to describe it is the bowel will telescope on itself. Okay, I mean, if you think of a telescope, the bowel kind of... Um, goes on top of one, uh, one another. They will have intermittent colicky pain, vomiting, bloody, mucousy stool, and have a history of like an upper respiratory infection. Um, sometimes their scan will be negative because the bowel will kind of go back again to where its normal position, and then it'll kind of go back and telescope on itself. So that's something to think about. They'll have the sausage-like mass, the bloody stool. An air conscious animal can be diagnostic and it also can treat the condition. Anal fissures, so those are small tears in the anal mucosa, can become from constipation and it can also be from trauma. And it is the most common cause of rectal bleeding. So treatment for this, sits baths, hydrocortisone cream, KY jelly, um, and they can be recurrent. So it can be something that happens kind of over and over again. Um, so, so just something to kind of uh, be aware of. Intestinal parasites, uh, usually uh, from fecal oral contact. Um, you want to make sure you use good or, um, hand hygiene. Um, and if one kid has it in the family, sometimes the other kids will have it. Um, sometimes the parents can pick it up. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, it's it can be kind of common. Um, usually treated with a one-time dose of an antiparasitic medication. Um, and depending on the the uh, child or the adults insurance coverage and the pharmacy availability is what you're usually going to prescribe so that can make it a little bit difficult um, acute diarrhea so that's increased frequency volume of fluid of fluid content so you always want to ask like how much are you going um, how frequently are you going how long has this been going on for um, because some people think diarrhea well I had it one time you know, or are you going like 15 times a day? Like that's a big difference, right? So you really want to kind of get a history. That's going to be the most important thing with diarrhea. Um, acute, less than one week, chronic, two, uh, over two weeks, or is it recurrent? Uh, with this brat diet again, bananas, rice, applesauce, toast, you know, did they travel? Where did they travel to? Did they eat something different? Did they go out to eat? Um, does anybody else have diarrhea? You know, all of those types of things to try to figure out what this is. Um, you could treat with probiotics or prebiotics. Um, I usually do not recommend uh, anti-diarrheals. Why? If it's infected, you want to get it out. You don't want to keep it in, okay? Um, and again, Pepto-Bismol tablets, okay? That's going to be your best bet, okay? Sometimes they will need treatment with antibiotics. Um, and again, it's dependent on the cause. you got to figure out what is causing this problem. Um, all right, and here's your references again for this week. I hope this is helpful for you guys.